Chapter 10 The Seven Bolds of Wrath Email May 16th Regarding Package Master, as scheduled, the package has just left our headquarters. With you in the light, Kreutzfeldt. Email May 16th Regarding Package Master, the package has just been handed over to the courier. Delivery will be right on schedule. With you in the light, Kreutzfeldt. May 17th, 2011, Cologne. He locked himself into the bathroom and examined his legs. He discovered a small irritated patch on his left foot, just a little redness of the skin like a small bruise. But Peter knew better. He knew that he was running out of time. The scent of coffee and fresh rolls was wafting through the house. From the kitchen, Peter could hear his father's voice and Maria's laughter. She laughed as if she had just heard a good joke. His mother greeted him with a kiss. She is very nice, she whispered into his ear. Please don't get her into any more trouble. Peter did not react to this comment. As he entered the kitchen, Maria was taking a hearty bite of a roll smeared in pâté. She was wearing her habit again and smiling at him. Peter could detect neither guilt nor shame in her face. On the contrary, Maria was glowing, and she seemed composed and determined like a saint. Endlessly beautiful, endlessly distant, Peter did not even dare to touch her. Maria responded to his look with a tender and affectionate expression that Peter interpreted as patience, as if he were a child who had not yet understood a simple fact. The fact that they had no future together. The fact that they could not even have a second night together. The fact that it was over. Good morning, his father said. Don't make such a face. Come on, have something to eat. His mother served him coffee and fried eggs like she used to when he was a kid. Even though he wasn't really hungry, Peter started eating without taking his eyes off Maria. After a while, she looked away, embarrassed. I will leave the two of you alone, his father announced, and left the kitchen. Shortly afterwards, Peter saw his parents in the garden. They were just standing there, hand in hand. They were saying goodbye, a sight that almost broke his heart. I made a phone call to one of Nakushima's people, Maria told him in a soft voice. They have made all the necessary arrangements. They will send a car this afternoon to pick your parents up. Peter nodded apprehensively. The spot on his foot was itching. What's the matter? Maria wanted to know. Peter forced himself to ignore the itch. Seth knows where I am, he said. He just called me. Maria was so shocked that the color drained from her face. What? He wants to talk to me. He wants me to meet a Dr. Kreutzfeldt later today in a hotel in Cologne. Don't go there, under no circumstances. Why shouldn't I? He replied spitefully. It would be the easiest way to get some answers. It would be the easiest way to get yourself killed, you moron. Oh, how lovely, you've got your usual attitude back, Peter mumbled sarcastically. What is that supposed to mean? Oh, forget it. I'm sorry. Peter pushed his plate aside. He had made a decision. I will not go. I know it is a trap. Before he came into the kitchen, he had used his father's computer to make printouts of the image files in the list of names. Now he placed the documents on the table. That's what I found on the SIM card. These are alchemical symbols, Maria explained to him. The alchemists denoted each element, each apparatus, and each process by a symbol. How do you know these things? My father had some interest in the history of alchemy. When I was little, he used to explain many of the symbols to me, like an extinct language. Peter became curious. Your father, ho-hum, you'd never told me anything about your parents. Why did your father study alchemy? For professional reasons. He was a kind of therapist. A kind of therapist? Was? Can you try to be a little bit clearer? Maria ignored him and began to point at different symbols on the square. This one here in the upper left corner is the alchemical symbol for mercury. And this one in the upper right corner stands for sulfur. This one here in the bottom left field is the symbol for aqua requia, a compound that can dissolve certain metals. This one here in the bottom right field means cinnabar, and this one in the center is the symbol that we already know, the one for copper. It seems to me as if the other symbols denote the apparatus that need to be used and the processes that need to be performed. In other words, it's a recipe? Cooking instructions? Maybe, but without measurements. The quantities are not indicated. That's how the alchemists protected their patents during the Middle Ages. Peter took another look at the square with the 25 fields. So it's a formula. What does it explain? The